today let's talk about doodles, cockapoos, labradoodles, all things doodly. Moshies, moshi poos, pompskis, golden doodles, cockadoodle doo. This video is kind of reparations from me to the doodle community because for the oh, for as long as I can remember I've been an anti-doodle. I've been in the anti-doodle brigade. I've just been a non-doodler. But now I've actually come to realise doodles are really cool dogs. Obviously not all of them and there are exceptions which I'm going to go through but in general I feel like we as a dog community are way way too harsh on doodles. I've written it down in my notes and I've called it the Doodle Dynasty which is quite a cool name because I've got quite a lot to say, jeez it's quite a lot. So here it goes, crossbreeding two pedigree dogs to create a designer dog is a relatively new fad and a lot of people are very much against it. Do I agree with the intentional mixing of breeds? Actually yes, I do. I own a crossbreed, an intentional cross, and she's really cool. So in theory, the creation of poodle crosses or designer dogs are it, it floats my boat. Everything is cool in Jodie Land in terms of crossbreeds, with some exceptions. Crossing dog breeds is not a new thing. Calling them designer dogs is a new thing, but crossing them isn't. Take the lurcher. Lurchers have been around for absolutely ages, and a lurcher is a cross of a working breed like a terrier or a herding breed crossed with a sighthound. You get like a mixed match, cool crossbreed. And lurchers have been around forever and everyone's fine with lurchers so why is a designer dog any different? Well actually it's not any different, it just has a fancy pants name which <laughs> it's a little bit ridiculous their names sometimes but they're popular and at the end of the day a name is a name. Let's go back to the origins of the doodle fad. It started off with a guy in Australia, I believe, who wanted to create the perfect assistance dog. Now, you can correct me if I'm wrong, and Labradors are very, very common assistance dogs. And they always have been, because they're really clever, trainable, intelligent, loving, friendly dogs. However, if anyone here has a Labrador, you will know that they molt so much. They just walk across your wooden floor and suddenly you have a shag pile carpet. A lot of the people that need assistance dogs haven't got the mobility or the yeah physical ability to sweep up all this fur. <sighs> In theory, crossing a Labrador with a non molting poodle will create a dog that has the intelligence, lovability, blah 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 of the Labrador and the coat of the poodle. Does this always work? No, that is genetics for you. But on the rare occasion that it does work, you have an amazing service dog. It wasn't a crazy idea. Victor Frankenstein meh, crazy plan. It wasn't. It was genetics and using genetics to human advantage. And that is selective breeding. That's how every single dog breed has come around. So pedigree elite folk who are against designer dogs because they hate crossbreeds, no. All of your pedigree dogs were created in the same-ish manner. As in, there was a niche that needed to be filled, so people selectively bred dogs to fill that niche. The niche nowadays is a trainable yet non molting assistance dog and they bred these dogs to fit that niche. No different. Stop it with your snobbery. And actually, let's just point out, the majority of dog breeds did not come around until relatively recently. Before they were breeds, they were types and Again, in theory, a doodle is a type. It's not a recognised breed yet, but it is a type of dog. And if we wanted to create this non-shedding Labradoodle as a breed, we will just select for the ones that are non-shedding, but also fulfil the other roles, such as being highly trainable, and keep breeding them together, selectively, natural, se uh, artificial selection going on, nothing natural about dog breeds, until we create a homozygous, population, which will then only produce dogs of that type unless you get a throwback, and that in itself will be a breed. Kapow. On the other hand, we have the dogs on this side. So the here are amazing, incredible service dogs. On this side, we have the ones that have 
the terrible coats that get knotted straight away, that have the non-ideal personalities, and these dogs aren't great. And these ones are the reason, mainly, why dog trainers, dog groomers, vets, etc. have a negative opinion on doodles. Because why on earth would we want to select four dogs that are neurotic, that have coats that mat up straight away, that have separation anxiety, that just aren't ideal. So at the moment we do have this split because first generation, second generation, that even third generation crosses, they throw out anomalies. But once we get this homozygosity going, then we'll eradicate these non-ideal ones and we'll get our perfect population. So the people who are breeding designer dogs, there are people who breed their dogs, this population, that are health testing, that they'll se they're selling their dogs for reasonable prices. I mean, if there's supply and demand and you're health testing your dogs, you can sell your dog for a couple of thousand and that is totally reasonable because People are still buying them and your dogs aren't ending up in rescue. However, there are these people who are breeding their unhealth tested dogs, uh, their Labradors with hip dysplasia, their Spaniels with separation anxiety. They're breeding their, these dogs together and they're creating the dogs with the matted coats that are going then to pet houses that are not brushing their dogs every single day and they're getting all matted and horrible. This is not ideal. This is the surface runoff of the whole designer dog fad. This is the bad stuff. So yeah, there are, of course, there are bad sides, but also, at the same time, you get this in pedigrees, because you get hip dysplasia in Labradors and in Poodles. You get epilepsy in certain breeds. You get neurosis and terrible behaviour problems in certain breeds. So this really isn't that different to certain breeds. It's only because it's highlighted since they are crosses and also they're very very popular at this time. Also something that really grinds my gears is when people say that my dog is a, a crossbreed so it's much much healthier than your pedigree. <sighs> I study genetics and although it pains me to say it, pedigrees are enclosed breeding genetic pools and they don't mix their genetics around unless you crossbreed. They have really really similar genetic information. That's why pedigrees look the same, that's like why two border terriers look the same, that's why two pugs look the same, they have the same basic characteristics. It's because they have very similar genetic information. It also means they have a very similar immune system, so their major histocompatibility complex science is the same or very very similar. It controls the immunity of a breed. So if you have a whole population of animals with very similar immunity, it means that genetic diseases can easily spread. If you take a dog from this population, say it's a Labrador, and you take a dog from this population, say it's a Poodle, and you combine them together, suddenly you have a load of genes that these and these dogs don't have access to, but when combined together, we have more. And this is called hybrid vigor. Uh, technically they're not hybrids as such, but it's still a thing. Sometimes argue that hybrid vigour is not a thing, but it is a thing. It is a real thing, and that's why you have founder effect and inbreeding and all that la 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 in pedigrees, but you don't find it so much in crossbreeds. That is not to say that a generic crossbreed that you find is going to be healthier than a generic pedigree, because that is not true, and that is fake news. And can I just say, as long as you're brushing your doodle, as long as you are training them, and as long as you're doing everything that you need to do to be a decent dog owner, and treating them like a dog, and not a designer item, you have the thumbs up from me. Because I feel like people going out and getting doodles is way, way better than people going out and buying brachycephalic dog breeds, or huskies, or any other breed that has serious health issues, or behavioural issues, or cannot cope in a house, and dogs that need hundreds of miles walking, that are kept in apartments. You go and get your doodle if you are a good owner, and good luck.
because doodles are cool.